So I saw the comments and you guys really read me a new one, which I was kind of expecting, but I do feel like it had to be done as playing Kenshi auto saving kind of ruins the integrity of it. In terms of watching a gameplay, I don't think it's any fun to know that no one can die. I installed a couple extra mods, reduce stones and some other foliage and compressed textures project. Both these should help reduce loading times and lag and stuff. Also, I did make an extra save because I had to get a thumbnail. So that's why I have two saves on here and there's three auto saves past my save. Basically what I did to get my thumbnail was I had to heal everyone up and stand them up. I tried to angle the characters in a way that the picture was taken. I don't know if that makes sense. But to do that, I sent them into this village. And one thing I noticed was that these ninjas would attack me if I sent them back into the village. I'm not really sure why. One theory I have is that while I was lock picking like Kabu or a gecko out of their cage, a ninja ran into me and that sparked some kind of conflict. Also a part I didn't show is I picked up Digna and Pia. They were both in the ninja tavern and Pia is extremely quick. She has 47 athletics, not to mention she has 20 strength and 22 dex. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to start carrying people back up to world's end because I don't trust people sleeping in the Flotsam village. While holding Gecko, who actually does have some armor on, Pia has 0% encumbrance and she's moving at 20 miles per hour, which is pretty good. Meanwhile, Digna with one strength is at 67% encumbrance while holding Feck and she's only moving at 7 miles per hour. And we're going to buy this house. I don't know why it's called the L house because we're not going to be taking any L's. I don't think it's very appropriately named, but it costs 28k. The main reason why I'm buying this one over, for example, this small shack, which costs 4k, is that the L house is a lot bigger and we can put a lot more improvements inside of it. And first things first, we're going to pop a research bench on the very top in the corner. First of all, we'll do gear storage and and this allows you to do something that's relatively cheap in my opinion. But I was streaming the other day and people were trying to tell me that it's an intended mechanic. So I'll let you guys decide for yourselves. In order to get tech level 2, we have to research small house. So we'll do that as well. I researched gear storage and we can build an armor storage, which has a very interesting interaction. And so with the armor storage, we can put this stolen plate jacket inside. And now it's not stolen anymore. Meaning that we could fence it off even in this town. How do you guys feel about that? People in my chat were saying that's how the real world works. If you put stuff, okay, P is getting attacked. He's getting attacked by cannibals. Those dudes are moving at 18, pretty fast actually. Unfortunately for them, P is moving at 21 though. Basically with any armor piece, you have to put in the armor storage and with any weapon, you have to put it in the weapon cabinet and they won't be stolen anymore. I'm gonna have Pia continue on east. I've never been this direction. And so I wanna see what's over here. I separate everyone into separate groups. I'm gonna have this running group just run back and forth between Flotsam Village and World's End while we're not doing anything. Then we've got the thief group, which is Kabu, Digna, and Gecko. Basically, Digna is just researching, but she can help out if something goes wrong. And Kabu is going to be stealing tonight. Well, this is awkward. This guy didn't see me the first time, but I'm assuming he might when I go back over here. He doesn't see me. Oh, this guy's... Oh, no. I think the shop guard's quicker than us. I'm not sure, though. I think the play here is we don't try to outrun this guy because we could outrun him, but we'd have to go through the main gate and those guards will aggro onto us. Either way though, we'll just loot this stuff. We got three model MK2s, but I think we can literally just transport it to a weapon cabinet. Yeah, we can. Basically what we did is we dug an underground railroad into our house and we instantly transported this gear. What do you guys think? Do you guys think this mechanic was intended that you could just take the gear and teleport it into your weapon cabinet? We're gonna have to juke that hit. Holy crap, okay. Now is a good time, I think. Lock. Oh, he's hit. He's gonna get in. No, he didn't make it in, I don't think. Oh, so we went from the fishing village all the way up here with Dora, and then we got all the way to the tip of this peninsula. We're gonna head back down to these three villages and see if any of them have companions for us. Oh, Pia's getting attacked. Holy crap, what is going on over here? I'm not sure if in vanilla this is a cannibal village, but in one of the mods I installed, it puts in different tribes of cannibals. Pia's getting ambushed. Oh, what the heck is she doing? She's fighting these guys. And this is another cannibal village. Oh god, please do not get taken out here. Her leg is busted. Oh my god, she's done for. Wait, they're banishing us up? That is extremely nice of them. I mean, they are cannibals though. Maybe they're just preserving her meat. And when they get hungry, they're gonna butcher us on this butchery table A. Oh my god, what is she what is he doing? Pia is dead. You guys don't know how badly I want to load and just avoid that whole situation. Like I'm genuinely sad that that happened because she was so fast, she had so much athletics, she was strong. There was no way she could die to like really anything unless that happened where I ran into a group of cannibals and just stopped moving and wasn't paying attention to her. No, oh God, this guy recognized us as a thief. All right, well, we're gonna let Cabo get knocked out. 
It's better to get knocked out from one guy than get knocked out from like eight dudes. Of course, he has to take out both the legs. What is Hobbs doing and Bark doing? Why are they even here? What is happening to Kabu? Uncon- Wait, he lost both of his legs? Unconscious for 5k? The guy was beating him when he was unconscious too. That was messed up. Kabu literally has no legs anymore. We have to get him mechanical legs now. We're gonna send Knife into the Holy Nation town of Blister Hill. I've never been in here, but I'm hoping that they will not attack her. Your heretics will be unraveled if your faith is not pure Romer. Your heretic ways, rather. We're getting in. I'm sure you know heretic. Blessings upon you, sister. Hey, This thing is litty. Literally. There's a fire over here. Need a sword? I can be your sword. Or whatever else you want me to be. Ooh, armored. How about Griffin? This guy actually has really good stats, but not good enough to be a mercenary. Like, mercenaries usually have around like 40. The wealthy wanderer will lead me to the truth, will lead me to the origin of the first extinction. With this, the land of the holy nation will finally find peace. First extinction, what is that? The destruction of the ancient capitals thousands of years past. According to the doctrine of the holy lord Phoenix himself, it was the agents of, sorry, the skeletons that caused the extinction. And it will happen again. And finding the truth will calm that fear. I believe so. 9,000. My god. Okay. 20 attack, 20 dex, 20 in all weapon skills, 20 in attack, 20 in defense, 20 in athletics as well. This guy's super good. Kang is actually a beast. 6,000. Dude has 26 melee attack, 19 melee defense, 24 toughness. He's pretty much good at everything. In my other series, I called him the James Bond of Kenji. We picked up this stealth leg for Kabu from this camping supplies slash robotics vendor. It was 6.5k and we've been spending a lot of money on companions and stuff, which I'll go into later sometime. But now we're down to 688 and it's crunch time because we need to make enough money to be able to afford a stealth right leg, which the vendor has in stock right now. It's kind of a rare thing too and I hope he doesn't restock before we can steal enough stuff to sell. Basically the way I've been stealing with Kabu is I pick him up and I deliver him to the payload. Unfortunately we're getting ambushed. Can I just do my freaking commentary boars? So I deliver him to the payload and then he picks a lock. He has 100 stealth plus 100% bonus from crawling. This place is actually the best place to steal from because there's no chance of getting caught. I'd say it's the most safe. It just doesn't give you that much stuff from the safe. Masterwork pants, not bad. But like this stuff just doesn't sell for that much. The blueprints are okay though. I think this is 6k, hopefully. All right, so now we do is we send in little. Pick up Kabu, deliver the package outside, then Little goes back in by himself. And then Little just starts jacking everything. We'll grab the chainmail sheets, those are pretty good. I really hope they patch up the fact that you can steal stuff while paused, because it really trivializes some of the game. That being said though, I'm still abusing it, mainly because there's a riot going on in my comment section, and if I don't finish this series soon, then I fear for the safety of innocent bystanders in my comment section. The thing about having little steel stuff is that if they came out and literally just chopped his head off right now, I wouldn't care that much. His stats are not the best. He is getting some in thievery though, because he's been stealing so much for Kabu. All right, if we sell just the armor, I don't believe it's going to be enough. We're at 6.1. And actually some of these runners have some loot, like this crappy Garth's Katana. And actually that was enough. Stealth leg right. Kabu is about to be back in business. It's alive! Look at him dude, he's like Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader. It's so cool to hear him clop around on the wooden floor. Alright, he's got his ninja rags back on and his outfit actually looks pretty good. This is daytime and really nothing to steal. We're gonna send Kabu back into this Flotsam village. Unfortunately, there's a dude sitting right next to the safe. And there he goes. I'll put Kabu right over here. Okay, I don't know where he went. He went through the ceiling. I'm gonna put him like right here. Okay, he went through the ceiling again, it looks like. Can we put him over here a little bit? He's stealth now. Let's move over to the corner. That guy is definitely in line of sight of him, though. This guy right here. We gotta kind of wait for that guy to leave. There we go. No line of sight. Okay, I think we can pick it. Maybe we should have Gecko run, though. How many failed attempts with that 64%? There we go. Now we got the cleanup crew down here, Little and his cute little undies. You're not welcome here, thief. Okay. All right, Gecko's going in now in his cute little undies. First of all, he's got to transfer the payload. Package is secure. I repeat, the package is secure. We got another Old World Boat MKL and a skeleton repair kit. All right, now Gecko's going to transfer the payload through the Underground Railroad out to Hobbs. The only question is... Does Gecko make it out alive? Okay, well, Gecko is, looks like he's done for. Why is that guy so fast? How is he running at 26 miles per hour? 
95 athletics that's how we got the runner squad down here to retrieve the package they didn't put him in a prison cell which was kind of weird all right so next night and we're broke again we're gonna start only selling blueprints from now on and we're gonna start gearing up our companions with this armor the weapons vendor is open tonight as well i haven't been able to get in there for a while we're gonna pick these cabinets too they might be juicy oh man i think i woke up guards oh the door actually closed on me that sucked so Little's knocked out and I kind of messed up here. I sent Bark to the thief group, but I forgot that Bark has 24 laboring and 50 engineer and 44 athletics. So she might actually be able to just flat out outrun the guards if she does get caught. But we'll see, we're going for these two weapon cabinets, this storage chest, this weapon display case, and this storage chest as well. And holy crap, we hit the jackpot. There are so many good weapons this weapon cabinet. I've seen like 7K, 6K, 6K, 5.2, 5.2, my God. All right. Alright, first box, nothing really. Display case, three weapons only, yeah. I mean, they are good weapons, but, but it's nothing like the weapon cabinets. Alright, now the true test. Does Bark outrun everyone? If we just run up this way, I think the committing crime thing will go away. We just can't run into any guards. Zero. Hey, we're good. Never mind. He says one apiece. Shop guard is moving at 16. Bark's moving at 24. Good luck, shop guard. And we're going to end the episode right there. In the next episode, we're going to regroup everyone, start training up their combat stats, and we're going to try to build our own encampment. As you guys already saw, I'm trying to do daily league videos, and I'm also going to start doing another thing. So if you guys do really like the Kenshi series, drop a like. Even if you don't like the way I've been doing the Kenshi series in terms of like starting over, like the video because with these videos and the ones I'm about to put out, I'm kind of testing to see what you guys want to see. I know a lot of you guys want to see more Mountain Blade, and I'm kind of waiting for another Mountain Blade update to launch for a really popular mod like a really big update before i do start another mountain blade series and so that's kind of where i'm at i do have every intention of finishing this kenshi playthrough i think the speed at which i do it will depend on your guys' feedback if you guys give me a lot of likes and i'll try to push out the next episode but like i said i am working on another project and it might be a game changer for my channel depending on how it goes over and yeah thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one peace out